Well, I haven't got any materials for the major parts, but I do have some, and I think I can get started. So let's go. This is a slug of two inch steel, um, and I used it for a mandrel at some point. Um, and I also used it for the flywheel for my little oscillating engine. Uh, it's now gonna form the uh, an eccentric sheave. Uh, and so the first thing I need to do is face this end off. Next step is to take the external diameter of the projecting piece here down to one and seven eighths of an inch and then use a parting tool to create a groove that's a sixteenth of an inch deep and a quarter of an inch wide. So let's get on with that. I'm going to just turn this down so it's concentric with the face uh, and then I'll measure that using a uh, micrometer to get the right diameter. A war department micrometer. That's that symbol there. 1945, this machine kills Nazis, etc. This here is two inches, 976 thou. So that needs to go down by 101 thou in total, which means on the dial, it's gonna be going down by 50 and a half. Right, I make that two inches, eight, seven, fifty. Right, so here's the deal. I have the parting blade now in parallel with the face of the work. And this is gonna be super awkward to do and I honestly promise that I'm gonna get a better camera mount uh, for the lathe work going forward because uh, it's just a bit ridiculous really. Um, but for now, I'm gonna time lapse you over there uh, just so you can see it happening. I promise it'll be better next time. Just to show that I'm not a complete charlatan, the width of that should be a quarter inch, and it is just about a quarter of an inch. And the diameter should be about uh, one and three quarters, and it's um, a couple of thou on the size, that's fine. Um, now what I've got to do is turn this around, grip it by these, and uh, make the bit that makes it an eccentric. You know, I have to offset a, a, a hole here and uh, a boss uh, for a grub screw. So uh, let's get on with that. Put some marking out fluid on here. I used a cheeky little uh, center finder to scribe a line uh, in two places. And then I, from the cross, I know that's the center. And then I measured out uh, 7 sixteenths uh, from the edge there. And then I double checked that with a, um, a set of Jenny calipers and they ended up at the same point. So I've center popped it and now I have uh, two dead centers. And so this is how I'm gonna indicate in the uh, the bore here, which is gonna be for the, um, the axle to go through. So I'm gonna put a dial indicator on this and essentially just dial it in bit by bit. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, gonna, that's gonna take a while. So um, I'll probably come back to you when I'm doing the drilling. Pretty much. Bang on, just to prove it does actually work. There we go, there we go. Yeah, just about a, uh, maybe a tenth of run out. Completely wasted on this eccentric, but hey. I don't know how easy that is to see, but this first surface here was done with my uh, original self-ground bit, and the one behind is with my my newest ground bit, which is actually from uh, a blank rather than from the the end of another tool. And um, I think you can agree that the uh, the new one's a lot better. 
So hopefully we'll get a better finish without having to resort to uh, emery paper uh, on the rest of the pots. Wow, okay, that, that took ages. <laughs> now that is a drill bit. That's 49 64s of an inch. Okay, need to get that slowed right down. What you just saw was this second hand three quarter inch reamer spinning uh, inside the uh, the Morse taper on my tailstock, and that's because it is blunt as anything. This uh, <laughs> I didn't realize this e clip was missing, so uh, there was nothing stopping the uh, the saw and this becoming completely detached and probably causing some major damage. But I've replaced that e clip now. So uh, let's get this cut. I'm just turning an arbor for that eccentric and uh, wow, turns out I actually can get a good surface finish from time to time. This is going to be really difficult to film because it's all up close, uh, but essentially I'm just going to be doing some simple turning operations, but I'm mounting the eccentric in an arbor now so I can get access to both sides and get everything uh, turned up nicely. Uh, I'm going to turn off this lobe and, and turn it down to the correct thickness, which should be the same as this one, a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, and then this here will be a quarter of an inch and I'll, I'll do that. So I'm just going to get on with that now. Here's the setup for drilling the grub screw for the eccentric sheave. Uh, I got the uh, distance in uh, using an edge finder and then across using the ruler trick and everything's quite tight now. So I'm gonna give it a shot. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this first episode of the 5-inch gauge locomotive build. Certainly, I found it incredibly enjoyable to machine parts of that scale, that size and heft. Uh, it was very enjoyable for me to, to work on the lathe with those parts and, and try and explore the boundaries of the machines a little bit more. Um, and although I, I did make a few mistakes on the way, thankfully, nothing has materially affected the uh, the, the end product and it's, it's all learning experiences for me. So I'm... I'm really pleased with how far we've got and hopefully you'll stick with me. I'm going to create a new series on YouTube for this um, and if you want to see more videos like and subscribe and all that good jazz and I will see you next time. Take care.